Hey guys, this is Kelsey from Sweet Fire Farm again. We're down in Teleco Plains at Cheney's Dexter Cattle Farm. We're here to pick up Mr. President. This is our new herd sire. We are so excited to be able to bring him home with us. Well, Mr. President has been bred for excellent confirmation. He's a nice, like, medium stature Dexter. He's got long legs and he's homozygous for A2 milk proteins and he's homozygous cold. So no matter what heifer or cow we breed him to, his calves will have no horns, which is a real benefit for us. Um, we're not interested in just budding calves every year. Um, so Mark has been very gracious here. Uh, he's the breeder and we wanted him to give us a few tips for other new bull owners like us about how we should handle and care for our bull and if there are any major things we should avoid doing, mistakes that yeah, we've we're, heard. we're really experienced ourselves, but, <laughs> yeah, but for if us, he has anything additional to offer. <laughs> well, let's start, let's just start at birth. Okay, so we, you know, we'll have half of the calves born are gonna be bulls. So, you know, then we'll, we'll look at those and we'll decide, okay, who's gonna be a bull, who's gonna be a steer? And, uh, and then at that point, we know what we're going to do. And so one of the things that we do with all the calves is when we wean them, we give them about a week, then we start to culture break them. And so, and the steers get about a week of that, and then off they go to a steer pasture where mm -hmm. we keep them. Now the bulls will spend a little bit more time with them. So we'll make sure that... Uh, they familiarize, they get familiar with humans, mm -hmm. right? And so we're just around them, we're talking to them, we're brushing them, we're putting the halter on and off of them. And, uh, and you know, during that time frame, we kind of get a feel for their temperament, too. Mm -hmm. And so what we found is the more time you spend with them, the better their temperament will be. So they, you know, they generally will spend, like I say, a little bit more time with them. Then we'll, sometimes we'll put them... If the cow that birthed the, the bull is not in that pasture, we may let him go run with the, an older bull. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if he goes down with the steers after we decide, okay, he's good. So, so then, uh, because you'll notice that Mr. President has a ring in his nose. Now, not all of our bulls have a ring in their nose, but if you take an animal to a show that's more than a year old, Mm -hmm. um, depending on what, where the show is, and there's some rules, right? And so one of those is that you have to either have a permanent ring or you have to have a temporary ring in their nose when you, they're out mm -hmm. when they're at the show. And so we chose to put permanent rings in there. They're not totally permanent. You can remove them. Um, also, we had heard where, you know, in instances where people had bulls that they thought they were very calm and easy going and then one day they they went crazy and they with that ring in this bull's nose the thing that a bull will do if generally if is they try to get you down if they mm -hmm. knock you down they put their head on you and they push on you mm -hmm. well, if you can't get away from them um, you could be injured right mm -hmm. so with that ring and that nose if you can get a hold of that ring they will absolutely stop what they're doing and uh, and if you get, you know, a bull that's, if you get a bull that somehow or other gets in with some cows that are in heat mm -hmm. that you don't want to be in there and you need to get him out, that ring can, can help you. Watch out now. If you go, you know, most, like I say, our bulls are halter trained, so if you, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's, he's in with cows that are in heat, then uh, he's going to... He's not going to want to leave. So yeah. what you can do is you can use that ring, right? And I've mm -hmm. done it many a time. Grab the ring, flip the halter on him. And then once I have the halter on them, they're halter trained. They you know they're had, right? So yeah. then I can get them out of there. But, uh, so that's, that's a little information about the ring, right? That's why we do it. Um, as far as 
keeping them, you know. And you guys, I don't know if you filmed it or not, where how I just walked up to him and put the halter on him. Now, this mm -hmm. bull in particular, I can do that in the pasture. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, and I'll talk about haltering a little bit more. So one of the things that I've found, the difference between heifers and bull calves is that the bulls are braver. So halter training comes a little bit easier because they're not as afraid of you and that halter. Okay. But, you know, also they're bulls, so, and they're stronger, and you have to respect that. So, so I have cows that I can walk up to in the pasture, but not, not as many. Uh, most of our cows have been halter trained, and you've, you've got to get them in a small space before you can get a halter on them. Mm -hmm. um, what was I going with this? But with the bulls, it's different. They're braver, so they stand their ground. You come up, get the halter on them, well, they know they've got it. Um, as far as keeping him, you know, so, you know, if, if you have one herd of cows, you can keep the bull with them. You know, different people. Some people run the bull year-round, some people separate. So, mm -hmm. the separation is the, the bigger deal with the bull. Yeah. And so, what we've found is if you try to separate a bull from your cows, with only the fence between them and the bull, mm -hmm. that's a problem. Because cows come in heat, and sooner or later, the bull is going to figure out how to either push the fence down, go over it, go under it, whatever it takes. Uh, we've had them take these gates and destroy these gates. It looks like you ran over them with a tractor. Wow. And uh, they just want to get into that pasture. So what we'll do is we make sure that there is some space. And that space can be anywhere from a hundred feet to a whole paddock away. As mm -hmm. long as they can't get their nose up against that fence where those cows are, then you generally won't have a problem. Okay. So that that's the, the biggest deal with bulls, right? Mm -hmm. Is get, getting them away from the cows when you don't want them with the cows. So, yeah. So they've got to have that space. When you wean them, what age do you wean your cows? So generally we shoot for five months. That, and uh, we mess that up all the time, but <laughs> five months is we give them a good amount of time, we feel like, with the cow, mm -hmm. so that they get all they need from the cow. And there's a, at five months, you can still get a halter on them and halter train them, right? Mm -hmm. So for five months, because once they get over six months, they start putting some weight on, and it becomes a lot tougher. Yeah. So that's why we shoot for five months. Uh, some people do longer, you know. If in a perfect world, you know, if the lo I would think maybe the longer you can leave them with the cow, the better it is. But mm -hmm. we, we want to take them off for five months. And so you have to decide though long before that five months which of your bull calves are going to stay bull calves and which ones are going to be steered, right? We, well. Sometimes we wait. Okay. You know, because they they change. I mean, it, you know, it's it's not an exact science. So, you know, they're a month old, and you go, boy, that's a good bull. Two months later, you're like, oh, that doesn't look so good. Four months later, it's like, man, that really looks looks good. So, so you know, we may wait, you know, up to six months i don't think we've gone longer than eight months okay. and uh, but we generally don't um we don't band them mm -hmm. or castrate them until they're four or five months old okay and is that something you guys do yourselves or you have your vet do it we do both okay so you know we <clears throat> i've cut them i've banded them mm -hmm. um if we <laughs> It's not pleasant, right? Yeah. Banding's much easier. But there's some risks with banding, right? Mm -hmm. um, if by chance well, we have the vet out, I don't know, every couple of months, every mm -hmm. three months, mm -hmm. if we ha we know we have some that we're going to steer, then mm -hmm. that's an opportunity for him to do it, right? Yeah. So, um, but I, I've done it, and, uh, and and anybody can do it, you know, if you. You have your vet come out, maybe you pay attention to what he's doing, ask mm -hmm. him. Or generally, 
real free with information. You know, you ask a bunch of questions and you can do it yourself. That's awesome. You, you got to be able to secure the animal. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our vet told me the other day, I was asking him about just budding goats. He said, there's no trade secrets. I'll show you how to do it. Right. So that was a really awesome perspective, I thought, for a vet to have. The goal is to have healthy animals. So uh, I know uh, I've, we've read Temple Grandin's books, and she cautions against that like, you should never touch a bull's head. Right. Um, but petting them anywhere else along their body is fine. That's right. Is that something you encourage to make them? Yeah, particularly now. What to say? I, you know, some of these deals will do what I say, not what I do. Yeah. Because the more familiar I get with an animal. Mm -hmm. You saw me go up and rub his head and all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah. But I, I know the animal, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, But I'm halter trading the bull right now, yeah. and he's pretty uh, skittish, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't touch his head mm -hmm. at all because that bothers him. So it's, you know, brushing and it's all about the body. Mm -hmm. and, but, um, yeah, don't touch their head. You're approaching a bull. Do you come from the side? side or or? The, I generally come from the side. And, and if you, you know, another thing, if they, if you're messing with them and they put their head down, they'll always put their head down and come up to you like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, particularly if you have a halter on them, mm -hmm. pull their head up because that's how they get underneath you, right? Okay. And that, it's to them, it's just a game, right? They're just doing what they normally do out in the pasture with the other cows. Mm -hmm. uh, for them, generally, it's they're not being you know, mean or anything. It's just playful, I guess. Yeah. Do you think cows are, can sense if somebody's nervous around them? Absolutely. But, you know, what I've found is, um, so my, my voice is relatively low. A woman's voice is a little bit higher, but adults, not so much. Mm -hmm. So. When we have our grandkids out that are, you know, anywhere from this tall to this tall, those, when those young ones, all they have to do is talk, mm -hmm. the cows mm -hmm. come to alert. Ears up, yeah. right? And so that, you know, that noise, that difference in noise, yeah, they, they sense that. And then, uh, same thing, if you get a person out here, and I've particularly seen it in the show ring, where you've got somebody that's really nervous about going out into the show ring with an animal. Mm -hmm. Well, I can mm -hmm. send them out there with the tamest animal we've got, but because their nerves are relaying to that animal, mm -hmm. it's dancing around and not cooperating at all. Another person, not me, because I've handled the animal a lot, but another mm -hmm. person that's familiar with cattle, right? Out there and grab that animal and it will change its disposition right then. So yeah. That's funny. That was my short answer. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> it is a very good answer. I know a lot of research has been done with dogs and humans where dogs can just look at your body language or your facial expression and change their own behavior to match because they've co-evolved with humans so well, and especially as a companion or a guardian animal. And I suspect there's probably, even though not as much psychological research has been done with cattle, cattle have been evolving with humans for millennia, I imagine they're pretty good at reading our emotions and knowing when to take advantage of them and, yeah. and when not to. And they're not quite as smart as <clears throat> dogs, but they do. They can. Yeah. What else? So once you halter train a bull or a heifer, um, how often do you need to put that halter back on him when he's out in the pasture just so he remembers? Not very. I would say very often at all. I mean, when you need to, mm -hmm. right? So... So the longer it's been, right, then you may have to get them into a smaller area. But for our bulls in particular, and I'm talking for ourselves, because we we move them certain times of the year, mm -hmm. they'll get a halter on at least two or three times a year, maybe four or five times, because you know we vaccinate, mm -hmm. then we, we pull them away from the cows, and this, this happens. So so they're a little bit more familiar. So. I have, uh, we have leased bulls where they've gone for four or five months. So they're on a different farm with different people, different this. And so, and um, I have been, generally, I have to get them in a small area, right? Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden I'm back 
and the people that we listen to, they, they don't call from or anything. Mm -hmm. So it takes them a little while to get used to it. But they, once it seems to me, once they get the halter on, they remember. It's like, okay, I'm had and I've got to do what he says. And, you know, they weigh a lot. I mean, they this guy, I can't remember what he weighs. I almost had 1,000 pounds, maybe 1,100 pounds. Anyway, if he doesn't want to move, I'm not going to move him. Right. And so you can tug on that halter and... Uh, I was going to ask, like, are there days that you go out into the bullpen or whatever and, well, maybe today's not a good day to work with him. Like, he's, he's being moody or whatnot. Or, or you, you're the boss. and we, we generally go out as the boss, right? And most, I'm not going to give up, right? I'm going to, you know, I may take, it may take me a lot longer, but I'll just keep, messing with them until I get what I need to do, whatever it is. I, I generally, unless it's a, a nasty day, I can tell you, they were all, they're under that cover out here. So he was out there, right? So I'll go out there. It's raining this morning. And I put the halter on him. He stood there. It was dark. Huh? No, he was standing up. And I had that light on my head. So that was something <laughs> different. He just, well, so he, he walked up to the edge of where the eve of that thing is. And he's like, it's raining. I'm not going to go. And he just stood there. And well, I pulled, I was like, come on. All my weight wasn't going to move him. And then, I don't know, maybe within a minute. It probably wasn't even that long. It seemed like a long time to me. It's like, all right, I'll go. You know, but if he doesn't want to go, you can just stand there. But they're generally. So that kind of, the next question, like, have you ever had a close call? Like, almost get injured by a bull or? No, I seems haven't. like most cattle I, farmers been, have some story. Or I've been kicked. I have been uh, knocked down by bull calf, and once that bull calf realized that he could knock me down, mm -hmm. he wanted to do it again because yeah. he didn't want to be on the halter, and that was absolutely one of the the hardest bull calves I had to train. Now, he came around over the course of years, right? But I'd be willing to bet that on that particular animal, if I walked up to him today, I don't know how old he is, five, six years old, that he's allowed to look at me and snort, right? Because I just don't think he liked me. But that's uh, that's probably the worst that I've had happen, other than being kicked by cows, which I was in the, ba I was in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've I've ever been kicked by a bull. I don't know if I say I've been pushed mm -hmm. down by one. Not a full size one. It's surprising how strong the calves are. They yeah. look oh, cute yeah. and tiny, but they're Oh yeah, they're all muscle. Yeah. Yeah, they are. It took three of us to band our steer last last uh, summer. Oh and he was little. <laughs> he was what, a month or two months Couple old, maybe? Months old, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're a lot stronger than you think they'll be. Yeah. yeah. We got they're it fast. done, but I can't imagine doing it to an older one. Yeah. They're cute, but they're strong. Yes. Well, the little bull yeah. calf that we're halter training right now, well, he was down with the cows down below. Mm -hmm. It's a good long distance up here. So when you feed them, they're all pretty tame. They come around you. So I just slipped the halter on his neck. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. That was <laughs> that was a big deal. It was yeah. a rodeo for an hour at least. Yeah, wow. he was so afraid, and of course, then the cows down there. Yeah, so he's screaming, and there. the cows like running around me in circles. But yeah, we actually we put our calf in the a dog crate to take him to the vet to get dehorned yeah. or disbudded, whatever. And uh, yeah, this small little calf put up such a fight. Again, we're putting them in a little dog yeah. crate yeah. You know, all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. you have to use what you got. Right. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I think I, our vet had at least two people, maybe three, and Mike holding them down while I did it. Yeah, there was but, four of us. Yeah. Um, you and I should practice walking them around while we got someone to show us what Go we're ahead. doing wrong. Yeah. Should we hold it for you? I'll go over here where there's other cows.
になるNice and comfy in here. our tour here on Cheney's Dexter Cattle Farm in Teleco Plains, Tennessee. Mark, thank you so much for showing us around. You're welcome. If you are interested in learning more about Cheney's Dexter Cattle Farm, you can check out their Facebook page and we'll put a link to that in the description of this video. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.